Tired of pumping expensive gasoline into your car? Well, one Japanese company reveals an eco-friendly car that runs on water. Using the company's generating system, water is converted into electrical power. Let's take a look at this amazing development. All you need is a liter of water, any kind of water to be exact, whether it's river, rain, seawater, or even Japanese tea. Genepax unveiled a car that runs on water in the western Japanese city of Osaka. They say it's an electric-powered car that runs solely on hydrogen dioxide. The main characteristic of this car is that no external input is needed. The car will continue to run as long as you have a bottle of water inside for you to add from time to time. According to Japanese broadcaster TV Tokyo, once the water is poured into a water tank at the back of the car, the newly invented energy generator takes out the hydrogen from the water, releases electrons and finally generates electric power. We highly recommend our system since it does not require you to build up an infrastructure to recharge your batteries, which is usually the case for most electric cars. According to Genepax, one liter of water keeps the car running for about an hour at a speed of 80 kilometers or 50 miles an hour. The company has just applied for a patent and is hoping to collaborate with Japanese automobile manufacturers to mass manufacture their invention in the very near future. For years there have been reports that people have found a way to make a motor run on water. And for years there have been conspiracy theories about how these backyard inventors have been paid off or even murdered. None of the conspiracies has ever been proven. And as far as the scientific community is concerned, no one has created a water engine. But now an Auckland man claims he's done it, turned H2O into fuel. So we sent Sarah Hall to investigate. It looks like a normal motorbike cruising at 100 k's in the far north. But there's one crucial difference. This bike is apparently running on water. Water that's been modified according to a secret formula by an Auckland inventor, Steve Ryan. Is it the holy grail of fuel research? Um, I would say that uh, the person that can find out how water can harness the amount of energy that it has, yes, have cracked something. and it's an Auckland boy with no background in science. Yeah, I'd say so. It's a hell of a claim. If it's true, it changes the world. Yeah, it'll be cleaner, greener, safer. Um, our reliance on uh, fossil fuels will disappear. Put simply, water is H2O, a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. The big car manufacturers are already working hard to develop cars to run on hydrogen. They're extracting it from water and storing it in a fuel cell. It will power a motor, but so far it's been expensive and inefficient. What Steve claims to have done is keep the hydrogen in the water and use it to power an ordinary engine. Put simply, what is it? What we've done is, is actually entrained the hydrogen in the water to make it fire. And you're saying, to your knowledge, that's never been achieved before? No. We are taken to an Auckland warehouse to check out Steve's water fuel. And basically what we've got is a, just an internal combustion engine. It was a Suzuki motorcycle. It's a 350cc engine, carburetor, fuel tank, fuel. Okay, so it, it looks like water. It is. It's a water-based fuel. What we're doing is just tipping some of here. Yep. Yep. And what we're going to do is put a lid on there. Right, so that's for me to hold. That's for you to hold, please. Because we're going to test this later on. And I'm going to just tip it in here, which is a fuel tank. And then what we'll do, I'm just going to get you to stand back for a moment. And then what we're going to do is stand back a bit and we'll crank this up. Right around, be nice and 
What did I just see? Uh, you saw a bike run on water, on a water-based fuel. People would say that you, you're joking. Yeah. That, it can't happen. They're entitled to their opinion. Um, and, and that's a, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what someone says, it's happening. So, it's water, you've changed the structure of the water, but you haven't added anything, like there's no hidden petrol in no, here? No, there's no petroleum, no carbons, no. G. Brian says the fuel is the invention. There's nothing particularly new about the bike, apart from a simple modification of the carburetor. These two here? So we got an independent mechanic to check it out, Steve Mason from Albany Toyota. Well, there's no alternative fuel supply anywhere, actually, because it's all going and stretched into the top here. So there's, um, well, for one, there's no room to put anything else. So, Steve, in your experience, with this bike, you've said that there's nothing unusual about it. What would you say if, if we said that he's putting basically water in here? Well, without seeing it, I wouldn't believe it for a start. One of those convinced that Steve has done what he said he's done is next-door neighbour Brian Connell. He's been an engineer for more than 30 years and has watched Steve's work in progress. How sure are you that it is water? Well, I'm pretty positive because I've seen him take the water out of the tap. He won't let me see the mix, but he says, here it is, there's the water. Mixes it. There it is. But it's definitely not octane. I mean, any octane you can taste or you can smell. Any octane, no matter what it is, that you can taste it, it'll, I'm sure it'll burn you. Mm. So you're I'm, positive it's water? I'm positive it's water. Steve Ryan gave up his job in finance to become a full-time inventor. For more than eight years, he's been tinkering with this idea, starting off in a shed at the back of his property. If he's achieved a water fuel, then he's beaten researchers all around the world who have spent hundreds of millions of dollars. How can you have done it when physicists, scientists with billions of dollars worth of funding can't do it? It's quite simple. If, if for example, I was to um, um, go to university and study chemistry, I'd be reading a textbook. So I, I would know what I can and can't do. But when you actually don't have that formal training, you continue to go down the track of believing that you can do it until you prove, you, prove to yourself that it can't be done or it can be done. Are you potentially the next Bill Gates? I think he's a bit light. What do you mean by that? Um, the All you need to work out is what the fuel is per uh, per year, what the revenue streams for the fuel per year, and then you need to just work out what percentage of the market you'll get. And if you're working on a 1%, 2%, 3%, you're talking telephone numbers. So potentially you could make billions and billions of dollars off this technology. Quite possibly. Steve Ryan has filed a patent to protect his findings, but it will take more than a year to come through. Initially, he told us he wouldn't show us the formula or tell us how he was making his fuel. What is your motivation for coming forward now? Um, for protection, because I believe that um, what, the further I go down the track of developing this and filing the patent and having the patent being disclosed to the world, um, I will have a lot of people come out of the woodwork, organisations, governments, that will want to play. In fact, Steve Ryan claims he's already had contact by the US Defence Department wanting to know about his research, and he's had unusual hits on his website. I have... Um, a risk management team that look after me um, and they put in protocols in place. Um, I don't have a vehicle that I drive. I have vehicles that I use. It's all very James Bond, isn't it? It has to be. 
People will say this guy is just a nutter. No, I'm probably a Cedric. And my, quite a few people call me quite loose, but um, the proof's already in the pudding. Yep, right on. Okay. And then what I'm going to do. So is Steve Ryan's fuel one that could change the world? Or is he carrying out some sort of elaborate hoax? Just last week, he decided he would give us a bit more of a clue about how he makes his fuel. Yes, it's New Zealand water. Sweet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to... I'll hold it, yep. and you can just tip it in. The water goes into this box, and 20 minutes later, it comes out the other end. You put these two wires together. Yep, a couple of wires together. We were allowed to look inside to observe the secret process, but weren't allowed to show you. We can confirm there was no hidden battery, no electricity, no sign of any other liquid. Put it into the little tank, which is definitely empty. So, in it goes. I poured the fuel into the bike and then saw the bike drive off. Proof? Well, this time we brought in another expert, Isham Idris, a professor of chemistry at Auckland University. Well, my first impression is nonsense. That's, you know, and I think that's where I stick to it so far, because to me it is still nonsense. Why? Well, simply because you cannot get more energy out, you cannot get energy out of something without putting energy. But doesn't actually smell of anything. Professor Idris believes what could be happening inside Steve's little box is a process called electrolysis. It's basic science. Put two metals in the water, connect them up, and hydrogen bubbles will form. But he cannot understand how that produces a fuel to run a motorbike. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. Have you got any theories on why no. that happened? No. No. You no. can't explain it? No, I cannot. In the top our news here at 6 o'clock, an age-old dream becoming a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. Water has always been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. He has developed what's called a water fuel cell. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, then use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. Meyer started working on this project for years ago. He's not a scientist. He isn't even a chemist. In fact, he never graduated from college. Myers was determined, he says, to design something to protect this country from oil embargoes. And we have calculated that if we take the dune buggy from Los Angeles to New York, we would roughly use 22 gallons of water. The Pentagon flew a lieutenant colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program and to run army tanks. Myers is currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance and you won't have to replace it. It'll be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The date happens will be one the fuel industry hates, but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. I'm Ralph Robbins. As you can see, many patents have already been received and many more are forthcoming. A car that runs on water instead of gasoline. Can it be true? Well, inventor Stanley Meyer made an announcement today in Colorado Springs. He says he's come up with a device that will hook up to any engine and allow it to run on good old H2O. News 13's Kurt Goff tonight on the possible impact of the water fuel cell. The next one, Stanley Meyer says the answer to dependence on foreign oil lies all around us. In seawater, tap water, and rainwater. Any kind of H2O, he says, can power just about every type of engine. How? 
With the water fuel cell, it fits in the palm of his hand, but it could revolutionize the world. You're talking about a pollution-free, totally new source of energy, the voltage disassociation of water. The fuel cell converts water into a gas, hydrogen oxygen, which is released in the form of thermo-explosive energy. So the water fuel injector simply replaces the spark plug. We hook it to a hydrogen computer system, which regulates and meters the flow going into the injector. It processes the water in such a way to release its thermo-explosive energy. Energy. The man who invented an engine that can run on water says he's been offered a billion dollars in cash by oil producing countries to sell his patent. So far, he hasn't sold. Environmental specialist Jan Porter talked to the inventor who thinks that the U.S. auto industry could produce cars that run on water now if they wanted to. Our industrial base of the world is based on the utilization. Dan Meyer has a car that runs on water, and that's drawing crowds okay. at this year's Extraordinary Science Conference in Colorado Springs. Myers has developed what is called the water fuel cell injector. The injector breaks down the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, and the hydrogen is what powers the car. Basically all we do is replace uh, the spark plug and replace it with the water fuel cell injector you see right here. We simply feed ordinary non plus water or process water in here and as the water goes into the injector uh, it hits a very high pulse voltage frequency which instantly converts it into thermal explosive energy and as a result we can run this car down a road on water. Meyer's invention was introduced in Britain earlier this month and now the Brits have followed him here. That we recently took a scientific delegation to witness Stan's work to really evaluate it and came back saying this is one of the most important inventions of the century. For 15 years, yeah. Meyer has been fighting to get his inventions taken seriously. Most inventors uh, have to be a loner. You have to be somewhat thick skin and don't rely on other people to support you because they will not. More times than not, uh, an invention is really stolen from the inventors. Even in my prior development of high technology, I've had uh, patents uh, taken from me. I learned from the School of Hard Knocks to be very cautious. Ma has always stood out against the crowd. He has no formal qualifications as a scientist because he didn't want to graduate from high school, leaving early to go straight into research at the High Powered Battelle Institute in his native Ohio. Now he works full time as a private inventor. He's got a device with potentially revolutionary implications. There's nothing startling about a machine that can extract the hydrogen from water. What is highly unusual is that it should do so with ordinary tap water. The conventional method is called electrolysis. Ma has turned that process on its head. Unlike electrolysis, his device doesn't use up large amounts of electric current, nor does it produce an enormous amount of waste heat. For 20 years, he has been refining a method to fracture water, which produces vast amounts of hydrogen on demand. This is not his latest apparatus. He was unwilling to let us point a camera at that. This is the simple device he used to convince a reluctant patent office that his revolutionary concept actually works. Alloy rods, acting as electrodes, are housed in a perspex container that's filled with water. Normal mains voltage is fed in through a transformer, but critically, there is virtually no current consumed, less than half an amp. The result is dramatic. Hydrogen pours off with the flick of a switch. My claims the key is his electronics, which pulses electricity rapidly across the rods at up to 20,000 cycles per second. In a way that's not readily apparent, this process transforms the equation. Whereas in conventional electrolysis, three times as much energy is consumed as is produced in the form of hydrogen fuel, in Mars apparatus, the reverse is true. It appears to produce several hundred percent more energy than it consumes.